Hi guys, it's me Catherine. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so if you don't mind and click the bell so that you will be notified whenever I uploaded a new vlog. So what I want to talk with you guys tonight. So by the way, I want you to meet Poppy. So she's my bedmate. <laughs> So she's sleeping with me every night. She's always in my bed. So, um, well, I just want to share with you uh, how I came to Dubai. So what life in Dubai and how to actually live here. So first, I just want to give you a history um, why I end up in Dubai. So I was working in Manila already for five years since 2005 to 2010 before I left Philippines to go to work abroad for the first time. So at uh, first I was working as a contract boy for one year for a local bank in the Philippines. Then from 2006 to 2010 I was working for a BPO company uh, which is a US based um, um, company so they have a uh, like uh, office in Shaw Boulevard in Mandaluyong so I was working with them for four years why I decided to go abroad but basically it's actually a dream of my mother to have a kid working abroad because she's wondering how it feels to receive like you know this balik bayan box for uh, stuff from abroad because someone their kids are sending gifts from abroad like that and also to receive dollars or other currency money from their kids who are working abroad like that so because it was my mom wish and so i said to myself yeah why not so actually i have a friend who's working already in dubai she's a friend from college joanna she's so she came to dubai first and she's convincing me to go here but she's telling me that i need to have like a hundred sixty thousand to a hundred thousand pesos to come here because i will need to get a tourist visa and a plane ticket like that and also of course allowances while searching for a job but I said to myself, where I will get that 100,000 pesos to go abroad? So what I did is I look, search online through Job Street Abroad and Work Abroad PH website. And luckily, I end up with a legit uh, uh, an agency that uh, that is working for, uh, for a hotel in the street so they have contacted me and they said that they have a client from egypt which is the ihg internet uh, intercontinental hotel groups so basically it's in the cairo heliopolis inter, uh, inter intercontinental city star in cairo so they said they have an offering for a job for me they need like 20 um, plus filipina um, to work for their food and beverages department so they're offering us first to be a waitress in a restaurant or a banquet um, banquet um, assistant like that so first I was in doubt because I don't have any experience working in a restaurant and I don't know if I can do it but I said okay let me try because um, just for a stepping stone you know at least i can go out of abroad without it, spending money you know because everything will be provided they will they will um you will not need to spend anything aside from the medical you know so we had an interview and they chose so luckily i ch i'm one of the girls that has been chosen to work in that hotel intercontinental um hotel city star in cairo so april 2010 i left philippines to work to Egypt in Cairo so when we arrived there so we had an under interest I was with like 22 ladies with us so we had an orientation we met with the managers of the hotel then there's this one man um, who gave his business card to me and four other girls and then the following day they called us they said whoever received a business card from this um, manager please meet him in this office so we met so we don't know so 
So all I know is I'll be working in the, one of the restaurants in that hotel. And then we will have orientation and training like that. But to our surprise, five of us ladies were chosen to work in the front office. So I don't know, maybe they see something to us or maybe... Um, Maybe I'm beautiful or something. Oh, <laughs> I'm just joking. So they chose us, so five ladies, uh, to work in the reception as a lab greeter because in that in that year in 2010, um, Intercontinental City Star will have a big event to to receive a lot of foreign nerve uh, foreign um, clients. So they need someone in the reception to speak English to welcome to assist VIP clients. So that our that is our um our main job there because that hotel they have three different hotels and you will get lost if there's no one will guide you how to go to your room so there's an hotel there's a resort and there's a residence area in that hotel okay so moving forward so we were in Cairo from April April 2010 to February 2011 only the contract supposed to be two years but revolution happened during um, January of 2011 during the police day there so maybe you heard this um, news before so for two weeks we're not working we just stayed in the hotel because it's not safe to stay in the in 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 the um, in the what they call this in our apartment but by the way I forgot to call you I was earning more in the Philippines when I left to work to Egypt I was earning like 22 to 23,000 per month already in from the BPO company but when I went to Egypt my salary only is four five hundred dollars which is the exchange rate by then is 46 pesos so it's just more 20,000 pesos but the good thing is my house is free my food is free there's no transportation fee so it's good I can save more actually and also it's a stepping stone for me also because I'm planning to move to Dubai and Egypt to Dubai is near so the contract is only two years but unfortunately we're not able to finish two years because revolution happened so in February of 2011 they said that all of the Filipino the foreigner morning in the hotel or in Cairo needs to go back home so in Egypt then there are only like 6,000 to 7,000 Filipinos and in our hotel there is like 50 Filipinas working there. There are 50 Filip uh, Philippine girls working in that hotel, food and beverages, front office, and just pass section. But out of the 50, me and my other friend, um, Beverly, decided to go to Dubai instead. So I have my friend and she has her boyfriend here. So we asked them to apply for a tourist visa. And luckily, our connecting flight is in Abu Dhabi. And Abu Dhabi is the capital of United Arab Emirates, where Dubai is also. So February 16, we traveled to... Um, to well every one of us supposed to go back home but me and my friends since we have a visa when we landed to Abu Dhabi we get out of the airport and we show our visa so we traveled from Abu Dhabi to Dubai for like an, an hour and a half hour and then we're in Dubai so since February and then we look for a job so looking for a job in Dubai is at first they said um, you cannot do walk-in so you just really need to apply um, online search online and then they will call you for interview then you go to their office you cannot just walk and um leave your cv there like that because if the police caught you since you're a tourist supposed to be you're not allowed to search for a job or to work then you will be in trouble but now it's more freely allowed now you know it's acceptable now that you come to dubai as a tourist and you look for a job and then the employer who will hire you will process your residence visa okay so after one month, luckily I was hired. So the first job, well, initially before that, one of the hotel, because in uh, IHG is Intercontinental Hotel Group, the one of the hotel is Holiday Inn. So where I live first time with my friend, which is in Ariga Dara, there's one Holiday Inn there. They called me, so we were recommended by our hotel in, in Egypt. But the salary they're offering is very low, so because they're offering me for a thousand eight hundred dirham per month which is the accommodation is free but i don't want to live in that accommodation i want to live with my friend you know and then transportation and food but for me still it's not enough so working in a hotel in dubai is actually the salary is not that good 
because I believe 1,800 to 1,000 dirham you can earn it from the Philippines if your Filipino wants to go here, you know. But it's stepping stone, then you can grab it if you will not spend a lot of money to, to, to go here in Dubai, you know. So I did not grab that one. So I end up working for retail sales because apparently in Dubai, working in the retail sales than in the hotel industry, tourism industry is better when it comes to salary, you know. But the only thing is that when you're working in retail, well, like in, in a hotel, you will have only one day off, which is not in the weekend, and you have a shifting schedule because the mall are open from 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. or 12 midnight during weekends so shifting so luckily I, I end up working with pandora my first job as a sales executive so pandora i don't know pandora then it's a jewelry brand which from denmark so i was hired as a sales 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 executive so i was offered to work um for uh with a salary of four thousand five hundred. that was their offering then so for me, I, um, according to my friends who's working here for a while, they said it's a good offer already, you know. So I grabbed it, and then um, apparently my other friend Beverly, she she landed the job in an office with a fixed schedule of off, which is Friday and working hours of nine to six, but starting is three thousand dirham per month. So, but she said that's fine. She wants to work in the office and like that. But apparently, after a few months, the company said that they will. They don't have much clients like that. They don't earn much, so that's why they want her salary to go down of like to two thousand five hundred. So she said she doesn't want to. So it's then I refer to Pandora. She said, got a job in Pandora also, but I just stayed in Pandora for a year. But I will, when I start working with them after five to six months, I was promoted as a supervisor. So but after a year of working with them, April of two thousand twelve, I I resigned. Because I want to work um, with a fix off which is Friday one of the weekend Friday and Saturday is the weekend here and then a fixed schedule of 9 to 6 so I end up working in a sh lighting showroom so 9 to 6 work and then Friday off because the owner is a Muslim so um, Friday is a blessed um, blessed uh, day where you need to go to the church here the mosque like that but unfortunately, my employer, there was a time that they don't pay on time until four months already. I did not receive my salary, so I decided to resign as well. And then, my third company is where I work now, for Stone. So that was in 2014, they hired me. Okay, so working in Virtuzone from 2014 to now, uh, six, that's been six years. Then, to tell you honestly, the first time I went back home to the Philippines, it was after five years since I left in 2015. 2010 so i went home for the first time in 2015 so i was working already on my third com with my third company um which is virtuzone from then 2015 2016 17 18 19 20 up to this year i was luckily to be home every year even pandemic started so and also starting 2015 i started also traveling so from 2015 up to now i almost traveled to almost 20 countries already so what i'm wanting to say with you guys is that dubai is actually a, a a good place to to have a good job and start traveling because it's in middle east so to travel to europe to asia it's near and there's a lot of offering here for a travel agency because apparently Dubai is a city of travel for tourism and also a city for shopping you know and just to give you a background as well um, the country where Dubai is called United Arab Emirates Dubai is not the capital of United Arab Emirates or UAE Abu Dhabi is the capital of UAE but Dubai is the most famous um, city or Emirates in UAE by the way United Arab Emirates composed of seven Emirates so Abu Dhabi is the first one, which is the capital. Then Dubai, Sharjah, Ajman, Ras Al Khaima, Fujaira, and Um Om Al Quain. Those are the seven Emirates. But the top three Emirates is Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and Sharjah. They're close to each other. Fujaira and Ras Al Khaima are actually known for their getaway. If you wanna have a short vacation you want to get out of bc dubai then you go to ras al Khaima or fujara like that you know so what i want to share with you dubai is expensive actually um compared to the philippines just as expensive you know because okay 
one dirham is equivalent to 13 pesos one dollar usd is 3.65 dirham but in international rate it's a fixed rate of 3.67 one euro is four point something dirham and one gbp pound is almost five dirham okay so for a job here in the UAE, if you're going to look, I can say there are people here earning like for a thousand dirham per month only, you know. Well, the salary here, in short, you um, you you will say that it's based on the nationality. So basically, the people who are European or Westerner have a higher, a lot higher salary compared to Asian people, you know. Well, maybe because it's not really um, because of their nationality. It's because their money is higher than the dirham. So basically, euro and GPP and USD, their earning here dirham, they divide it to their currency. While us Asian, we multiply it. Like Philippines is one dirham times thirteen. With um, with European, the euro is dirham divided by the euro. So, so then you will think it's practically that's why they're earning more because they're from a country there which their currency are more value than the dirham you know but also here um so don't be surprised if you come you're filipino or asian you go to dubai and you will have the same position with a european one in maybe in the same company or different company they will hire uh, they will hire but the salary offering are a lot different you know so that's why when you look for a job here, you will see sometimes it's specified that what nationality they're looking for, you know. And also, where to live here in Dubai? Actually, Dubai for me is like divided into two parts. Well, on the south part, which is where the Dubai Marine is, the beach area is, well, the Palm Jumeirah is, um, like that. Those where the Westerner and the European live. Then on the north part, which is where the Dara, the Satwa, the Karama are mostly the Asian. Well, also based on the prices of the accommodation on the rental, okay? Well, in the south part where Dubai Marina is, uh, the Jumeirah part like that, well, it's costly there. The, uh, the rental are more higher compared to the Satwa, Karama, and Dara part. I live in... I can say it's Karama part, which is in Mangkul. So I live in a villa, not in a in a condo or flat or apartment. Um, so it's like a normal house in the Philippines, you know. How much is the cost of the accommodation? That depends. So mostly in Asian, they live in a sharing accommodation where in one room, if you're a bed space, there will be like eight to ten people in one room which there will be a bank bed there for four to five bank beds. Then the rates for the lower and uh, upper deck are different that's like 600 to 800 dirham you know then um european also they also do sharing but they're per room you know so that depends which type of um property they're renting it's in their villa or in a flat you know and so usually only in one room they're single or a couple only not like for asian because we're trying to save a lot of money to support our family so we're <laughs> trying to be um, getting um, cheaper um, accommodation there's aside from bed space there will be what they call partition so in one room they will divide the room or the hall into two three or up to four division then they will put like partition wall where you will have somehow a um, little bit of privacy like me I'm living in a partition area and the prices started from a thousand to a thousand five hundred that depends also if it's included the electric and the water bill so sometimes also the internet is additional fee so it will be divided equally among the total numbers of people in one property or in one house you know as for me i'm my partition with this is like a thousand a hundred which inclusive of everything internet water electric and even drinking water and i'm living in a villa so we have a living room we have a dining area and a kitchen but mostly flats here when you rent 
you don't have a common area the only common area that you will have is the kitchen so i pay more for my comfortability and somehow a privacy so others also if you have your family or you have better salary or higher salary you can rent a, a, a condominium a studio flat or one bedroom or two bedrooms with your family it depends of both of you are husband and wife are working together and you can afford you know because when you rent your own flat you will give them a check so it depends from four to to six or twelve checks if it's a monthly checks you know so that's how it works here too to pay for your accommodation for the transportation there is trains here the metro there is buses taxi and tram okay most convenient transportation is the train i use metro to go to work and there's a 30-day pass the 30-day pass is cost me a 140 dirham per month so that's only for one zone so if you're depends on where area you're coming from and two so you can add two or uh, two zone and depends you know but that's included already also the bus um within the area so basically in the metro one way i'm paying three dirham that includes also the bus feeder to from the metro to my office you know then under the three dirham one going back home so total in a day six dirham you know so six times 22 days because i have two days off per week so that's minus eight already in a month so i will spend like uh, 130 plus dirham my unlimited access is 140 dirham only so it's better for me to get that because sometimes after work i'm going somewhere else See? also so i have my church activities i do some groceries or meet some friends outside which is covered by the um zone that um um used to really go to to work so i don't need to pay extra for that you know and also um, on weekends sometimes i go out with my friends or I do some errands so i don't need to spend more so this is a huge savings for me already then when you take a taxi here these are minimum so don't be surprised if it's your first time so even though let's say it's showing in the meter it's only 10 or 9 dirham you need to pay 12 dirham they accept credit card as well then there's also tram so after the metro in dubai marina park especially there's a tram connection so you can go to other part of dubai marina which is the jbr the knowledge village like that or even to go to the palm where you can connect to the monotrail so those are the different transportation in dubai another thing that i want to discuss with you is also the food the food here is actually, uh, it depends what type of food you want to eat. So I'm starting to like Indian food. I find them cheap as well. So I'm starting to eat samosa, which costs 250 dirham or even one dirham. It depends on where you buy it. Well, in Spain, it's one of the grocery in Dubai. You can buy it for 250 dirhams. When if you go to Karama, there's a cafeteria there. You can get it for one dirham for the vegetable one. So it depends. And then at the office or at work, there are Filipino who's selling pack lunch so like one of my colleagues selling um pack lunch for with the rice and meat or vegetables with it will cost me 10 dirham per pack so that's already 130 pesos in the philippines so you can just think if you're filipino so do you find dubai expensive <laughs> so others also it can be up to 12 to 15 dirham it depends especially if it's pork then it's somehow more um more um it's some um, more um price on it because pork here is somehow it's not um it's not always available and you know that this is a muslim country so they're not allowed to eat pork no and also in the malls there are a lot of fast food so you can go to mcdonald's to kfc they have stuff meals so if you're working the mall or a property there are have offerings for people who's working um for different companies so you can get for a meal of 10 dirhams up to 15 dirhams or that's already cheap you know if um you're getting your judgment of course it will be a lot cheaper if you cook your own food but for me i don't cook it's not my passion i don't want to go to the grocery i don't just really buy but it, a lot of people are doing that they go to the grocery they cook their own food they pack their own lunch so it's a huge savings for them you know so basically me my allowance per day for my food let's say it's like 30 dirham per day but sometimes i don't spend that much as well because Especially when I try to diet, I don't eat breakfast, so I just eat lunch, and then on my dinner, I might get some shawarma, cost 550 or 6 dirhams, you know, or sometimes I'll just go to McDonald's, buy the french fries or the chicken wings of 5 dirhams, sometimes like that. So I spend like 
12 or 10 plus 5 so like 15 or how much it's like half of my budget you know so it depends depends of the lifestyle that you want you know but there's always a way but for me i always look for an affordable way to 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 live you know affordable but comfortable and convenient for me and living within your means as well there's a lot of places here where where if you want to go shopping shop during sales you know like that dubai have different different um season they have different sales offering when it comes to shopping there's always a shop to where to buy a cheap one like day to day for one to ten their homes only you can get your groceries some food or some fashion apparel there as well you know and another thing about dubai is we are a beautiful country but you don't see much nature if you love greens you know um plants flowers you don't see that much here you know if you will see it somehow um it's not really natural you know but the buildings it's very modern it's very high tech you know so as if you review my if you already watch my previous blog you will see in the main highway of dubai the sheikh zayed road the beautiful skyline of dubai you know so that is how it looks like it's beautiful you will be amazed but if you're fun of uh, nature you will not see much but you will see the desert the mountain without the trees you know it's mostly rocks and the beach you know and usually it's man-made you know also like that and a very fascinating buildings like that you know those are the things that you can see in dubai that's why i'm trying to travel um as much as possible to see nature in another country in the philippines you know that there's much nature you know though you can see greens is different so when you're in dubai try to do things like traveling to see nature but you can go also do some staycation to other emirates like ras al Khaimah and fujar they have beautiful beach as well you know so to get away from the bc city of dubai over the weekend like that especially on there's a lot of long holidays here during eid or national days like that we'll have like three to five days holiday no work so you can go somewhere or even travel abroad from here and what else well basically in the internet here so there are three telecommunication company that offers data so etisalat do and virgin so for me if i want to get my postpaid for monthly i will get a 6 gb data for one month with 200 minutes of flexi calls which i can use from local or any international country call to cost me for 150 dirham per month that's not included my mobile fee so if you will get a mobile let's say for an iphone you will get additional 170 depends on the model per additional on top of the 150 you know but you can get prepaid as well so i believe it's more cheaper in the philippines because i can get 1 gb data for seven days for like five dirham because it's like 70 dirham or 100 dirham let's say 100 pesos i mean and but of course the the connection here is faster and very good as well and but there's a lot of website or like especially video calling that's not working in dubai or in the u.n like skype video call is not um for personal it's not working it's block the video messenger calls whatsapp it's not working in the uae and also the dating website like match.com and eHarmony, it's not it's all black hair and adult website. So don't be surprised if you come to the UNE and you cannot access this website and you cannot do video calling. So but for business in your company, if they activate it, like in my company, I can use the Skype call, you know. And also messenger. So it depends on the um the connection, the data connection of uh, for business you know and what else um well i think this is the thing i saw dubai is actually the city where or the uae where you can see mostly all the nationality in the world i think in my opinion the only nationality that i haven't met in the uae is from Taiwan I'm not sure maybe there is but there may be a businessman or um, or a visitor only but I haven't met one there is Chinese here there are Korean there are uh, Japanese there are uh, from Hong Kong you know a Singaporean here that I met but Taiwan you no know, Vietnam there is Myanmar also 
and also European and Western, uh, I mean, North and from uh, South America, there are people I met already, you know. But actually, the total population of the UAE is only 10 million and only 10% of that are locals. So 90% are foreigner or expats and most of them are Asian. So number one population in the UAE are Indian, I think, then Pakistan, Bangladesh, and then Filipino. Filipino are many. So if you come here you're a Filipino, don't be surprised that you feel like you're in only in the Philippines also or in Manila only, you know. So you will see a lot of Filipino here. So somehow you will not feel homesick because you can talk on your own language, Filipino Tagalog, you know, maybe in your work, you that's the time you speak English, but at home, you speak Tagalog, you know. And you will not learn Arabic here, not like when I was in Egypt, because most people that they don't speak English or speak Arabic, so we were forced to learn the, the language. But when I moved to Dubai, even though it's Arabic here, I don't speak much with locals or Arabic people, so I don't practice it. So I forgot it already. I, I didn't. Uh, it was not developed, you know. So English and Tagalog is the language that I'm mostly speaking in Dubai. Um, so that's about Dubai. So if you have some questions or some views about Dubai, or if you want to know more, you can say, leave me a comment or message me in my Instagram or in my um, Facebook or leave a comment here, and then I will answer you and if you want to come here you can just um for a visa to, to find a job you can apply for a tourist visa it's easy so you can contact me as well i can recommend some agency for you and then um book your your flight ticket try to search in some pacific or in sky scanner and um well it's easy when you apply for a tourist visa you just need your passport copy and your photo and of course your money <laughs> to to come to Dubai if you have friends that's good or relatives here you can stay with them when looking for a job and then um stay with them save some money as well okay so hopefully I give you a lot of information about Dubai and if you're planning to come here I give some clarity about the misconceptions or whatever questions that you have in your mind about Dubai or UAE overall, let me know. Okay, thank you for watching and listening. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And we'll see you again on my next vlog. Thank you so much. 